Look at this sky. Oh yeah, there is a storm a coming. And yep, it did come. Oh wait till you see this mess. And then look. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, hey! Welcome to Mondays with Mark. I'm Mark, and this is Smokey Steven Mark! <laughs> what the heck is this? The shoulder move, what is that? Oh my goodness. Yes, it is! Welcome or welcome back, and it is so great to see you. Oh my, I don't know why, but it seems like it's been, well, a lot longer than a week since we've been together. Uh, since the last Mondays with Mark. It just seems that way. I don't know. Maybe it was because I was looking forward to it all day. I don't know. But I'm so excited to spend some time with you this evening. And we have a great episode too. Oh my gosh. So we're going to, oh, I'm going to share some viewer pictures with you. Oh, one of my favorite things to do. I know. I know I say that about pretty much everything, but it's true. I love sharing viewer pictures. I do. And then, um, let's see, we're going to go outside and we have an awesome project for like, for the lawn or an entranceway or the garden. Oh, I'm, I'm super thrilled about the project today for real. And, um, of course, we're going to get caught up on some chit chat and then, oh, oh, yep. As you already saw. We had some garden damage. Yeah, we did. We had some very, very bad weather uh, over the last week or so. Well, actually, here, just take a look. So, this is the aftermath of the storm. I hope you can see these colors. It's quite amazing. Even though it was, like, incredibly destructive. Yeah. Took down the entire drain spout inside of their porch and landed on my trellis and the grill. So that's going to be some cleanup. And, you know, of course, some plants got damaged. And, uh, and, yep, it's like the rock garden part is flooded out. Do you survive? Yeah. You're good. Good. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, that was that. Oh, man. Oh, man. And check this out. So, you know, this was, a, you know, a tree that was, like, wrapped in vines and attached. And it, it's growing in the neighbor's yard, you know, and which would make it their responsibility to clean it up. So I waited a couple days and then I went over there and there's nobody there. It doesn't look like. It, it, it looks empty and I went around back and everything so I finally found somebody who was out in the yard and they said that the house is now condemned so I went around and I opened the door the screen door in the front and there is there's a sign on there that the house over there is condemned there's nobody in it there's no phone number on the sign or anything and nobody seems to know who the owner is so it looks like it's on me to clean it up so I did start to uh, to do it and I, I'll, I will be able to do it I'm just going to have to do it a little bit at a time because it's um, it, it's not hard, but it takes a while, you know, and it, I guess it is hard, you know, you have to lug all that stuff. So I ordered a bunch of um, these plastic like tree disposal bags from Amazon and they came today. So I'll just do a little bit at a time. Now, if there's any damage, damage like to the grill, because it fell right on the grill and I haven't quite got to the grill yet, um, then I'm going to have to find out you know, who's responsible 
for that, you know. Um, but anyway, so there's that, you know. And that happened last week. I believe it was Wednesday that happened. Uh, maybe Thursday. I can't remember the exact day. No, it was like more over the weekend. We had some really bad weather. It was like hail, thunderstorms, really high winds, tornado watches. And, and we did get it, you know. But um, so there's that. And so that was on my mind. And then like, so, you know, this week, you know, I said it was a long week. It, 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 it was a long week and for a variety of reasons. And Stephen and I are planning on doing a video this Friday, more of like a, a real talk chit chat. You know, we haven't done one of those in a long time. And admittedly, I'm, they make me a little uncomfortable talking about personal stuff, you know, but, um, but we are planning one and look, the title is going to be insecurities exposed, right? Um, and uh, a lot of things that happened this week kind of played into uh, my insecurities uh, this week. Um, so, you know, first of all, we had that happen, you know, and that's not a big thing on its own. But when I tend to get very overwhelmed very easily, and when I get overwhelmed, it tends to have like a domino effect or like suddenly all these little things that aren't really that important are extremely important and the ruminations go and I've always struggled with things like self-esteem and self-worth like my, my whole life you know so when I get overwhelmed and I start getting in my head no matter what it is ultimately turns inward and everything is my fault and every, you know, well, you know, what? and anyway, we'll talk more about it in the real talk video. But there was that incident that happened. And then um, another huge insecurity of mine are my teeth. And um, I developed an infected tooth on what this was Wednesday. This was Wednesday it was the infected tooth. And it was the worst one I think that I've ever had in my life. It was I, I swear to you, my entire body hurt, you know. Um, but I got some antibiotics and, and, you know, everything is okay. And I actually am going to the, I start, I, I need some pretty extensive work done, uh, dental work done. And, um, that all begins later this month, actually it starts. And that's tied into our insecurities video too, because, uh, it's been a source of self-esteem issues my entire life. I, I was born with a, a type of, it's a degenerative uh, dental type disease, you know. Um, I have it written down. I can't remember what it's called, but, um, but well, oh, I have it here because um, we were talking about the video right before we started filming today. Um, enamel hypoplasia, um, which you know, which is basically affects how my body produces enamel on my teeth. And then the medication that I'm on makes my teeth brittle. And just in the last couple of weeks, I've lost a tooth and another tooth has broken off. It's just, it, it's, um, well, it plays on my mind, you know, and, um, so, but anyway, we'll talk more about that on Friday. And then in addition to that, you know, um, the neighbors moved out downstairs. So now there's two empty apartments in this building and there's only three in this building and we're, you know, we're the one. So the whole place is empty and the landlords have been around, you know, like milling downstairs and doing work and everything. Apparently they left the place completely trashed, you know, um, but, uh, that can play on my mind too. You know, who's going to come in next? And then there's rumors that the landlord is selling the building, you know? So already I have myself all talked into, we're going to have to move out tomorrow because they sold the house. They're not going to give us notice. Where are we going to go? Blah. You know, it builds on each other, you know, all this stuff builds and it gets into my head, you know? And then Steven hasn't uh, actually been doing too well. He has a whole new set of symptoms that popped up this week and it deals with his mobility and um, similar to vertigo he's been experiencing. But um, actually at right now, during my filming right now, Steven is at the hospital and he's getting uh, an MRI, like a brain scan and all that stuff done. So that's good. You know, we'll, we'll hopefully have some answers after that because I, you know, I know he, he's scared, you know, and, um, and in turn, then, you know, I get scared and it's on my mind and I just feel like I wish that I could do more for him and I can't. And, you know, when you see somebody that you love, struggling or uncomfortable or in pain or in fear you know it's it can weigh on 
on you too, you know? So there's just been a lot of things that happen in a relatively short period of time, and I can let it can like, you know, with my head. So, but um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And I think we're going to do that video on Friday because it ties into what we uh, are, are doing in preparation for our wedding in October, right? So it's kind of like, I don't know, like resolutions 2.0 in a way, because uh, I really didn't, uh, I really, I didn't give it a good shot for my original resolutions, you know, but, uh, but anyway, I'm rambling on. I'm sorry. We'll talk all about that on Friday. Okay. So, um, let me get my notes because I don't want to forget anything here. Where, what are we going to go to next? Yeah, let's change frames of mind. Let's, let's bring it back and get all happy again. Okay. All right. So, oh, 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 I have a project that I want to share with you and it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. Now, admittedly, I've never done this before. I'm going to act like I did, of course, when we're doing it, you know, but so we're going to see how it turns out and, um, we're going to make a pedestal. Gibeon plant stand here. Check it out. Oh, hey guys. Hey, we have a perfect project for the yard or the garden. Today we're going to make a Gabion planter. Oh yes, this pedestal planter is so trendy right now and it's actually pretty easy to make too. But what the heck is a Gabion anyway? Well, basically a Gabion is a metal cage filled with rocks and you've probably seen them while driving. They're usually used as retaining walls. But the art of the Gabion? Oh yeah, that has been gaining a lot of popularity in the US, but it's been long used in Europe and Australia, I mean for years. And the art of the Gabion is just this. Think planters and benches and fire pits. So awesome. So today, let's get started on making our own Gabion plant stand, okay? And this is what you need. We are gonna make ours out of three sturdy tomato cages, just like this. You can get those anywhere. And in addition to that, you will need some river rocks. Oh yes. Now you can just source these on your own like I did. I have tons of them in my yard. Or you can find these at any large home store like, you know, like Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. All right. And then in addition to that, we will need some wire. Any type of wire will be just fine. And to start off, I cut probably about 10, 20 pieces in about four to five inch uh, long strips there. Okay. All right. Want to get started? Let's do this. Okay. To begin with, we're going to take all three of our tomato cages, invert them, and stack them on top of each other. Just, whoops, just like this. Okay. So we'll set this down here. Okay. And then next, we're going to be creating the, the wire cage of the Gabion with these, right? So we're going to kind of adjust these to make even, like, to make an even cage, if that makes sense. You can turn them, you know, whatever way you need to do to make an even cage so it looks kind of like that. And this is where our wire comes into play. All of those little pieces of wire that I cut, we're going to attach at different intervals all around to hold our cage all together, okay? So let me get started on that and I think it'll make a little more sense as it goes on, okay? Okay, so we finished with the wiring part of it. So, and that's kind of what you want it to look like there. See, every so often we have our little wire strips there and anything hanging over, just tuck it in like that. You won't be able to see any of it, okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? If there's some space in between, like I don't know if you can see there, it's okay. It doesn't matter, all that will be hidden, okay? So next, all of these pieces on top, all these spikes that are on top, there was a lot more. I cut some of them off, but we have to get rid of them, okay? So the easiest way to do that is with some bolt cutters, right? But how many households actually have bolt cutters in the claws? I know we don't, right? So never fear, get a regular, regular wire cutters here. 
And then we're going to take our, our, our spike, or I don't know what you want to call this. We're going to bend it down just like this. And then take our wire cutters and just give them a little notch. And to do that, we're just going to twist, 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 twist. And show you there. Have a little notch there. Okay. And now we can just bend it back and forth. And it comes right off. Okay. And uh, you're going to want to do that with all of those ones that are on top here. So that we just have a flat top. All right. So look, I have one more to go. Let me get that off and then we'll fix this baby up. Okay. Okay. So now at this point, we're going to take a look at our, uh, our little frame here and we're gonna see which side we want to like be in the front or whatever what's the best side and now we can stretch it back out because you know we've been messing with it and I'm just gonna get crooked and all that stuff we can just it's very forgiving I think actually that looks good I like this big space here okay all right and now we're gonna place it in our garden or where you're gonna want it to be, okay? So we look and see what side we like. I think I like this side for the front. And I'm gonna place mine right in our rock garden here. It's gonna go right there, okay. So we're gonna place it like that. And next, we fill her up with rocks. Okay, so we're just gonna fill up our cage here with our river rocks and I started with like the larger ones at the bottom and there's no set way of doing this we're just gonna stack our rocks in here just like so <laughs> There it is. Ah. Okay, so now at this point, I'm just going to take a look and maybe tuck in some smaller rocks in different places, you know, like here or there, you know. Now look, don't get too OCD about this, okay? Because as you can see, it looks nice the way it is. I could waste a whole hour just putting two rocks in, so we're going to move on, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, now at this point, I have made up the planter here and we're gonna set it right in dun, 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 like that yeah that's kind of sturdy there okay i wish i would have kind of done this i made this earlier today i wish i would have done this like a week ago so it like came back and was all vibrant but it's just a vine and then a couple elysiums here uh, for color and this will all fill out and I like how the vines go down over that so there's that and uh, yeah I like it so there you have it I hope you like my little twist on a gabion a, a, a pedestal gabion planter oh yes so now we have a trendy adorable stand that creates vertical imp interest in the garden you know how cool is that right now there you can do a lot of different things with this for example instead of putting a pot right in it you could put a topper on it like a like maybe a round metal tray or a round paper or even a piece of wood and then you could put your potted plant or plants on top of it right and you don't have to fill it up with river rocks you could fill it up with practically anything how about stainless steel garden globes wouldn't that look stunning oh my gosh i think it would so anyway there you have it our pedestal gabion plant stand cool huh you know i'm really happy with the way it turned out i am you know like um because i I just was unsure how it would turn out. I had never made one before, you know, and it was a little tricky. The most tedious part was attaching those little wires, you know, but, you know, I think if I do it again, like another time, it, 
it'd be so much easier, you know. But uh, but none of the directions changed or anything. It was just like I was unsure, hoping that it would work, and it did. So it's nice. I really like it, you know. It, it, they're kind of versatile, too. Like, I could see, like two of these in front of like an entrance way or on either side of a door or like maybe on either side of, of steps leading up to a deck. Oh, I think that would look so stunning. I don't know. And you could like, you could, you could paint the frame. Like you could paint it black or you could paint the rocks inside of it. Oh my gosh, there's a lot you could do with it. Well, anyway, I hope you like that project. I do. I hope you like it. But, um, all right. So what are we going to do next? Oh, 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 we have some viewer pictures to show you. Let's do it. Hey, okay, y'all. Oh my gosh. So we're going to share some viewer pictures. This is where we share pictures that were sent in to us by viewers like yourself who um, either like made one of the uh, projects we made here on the channel, you know, like a DIY or maybe maybe a recipe or maybe they were inspired by one of our videos to make something like that too. I just love sharing these pictures because, you know, one of the... Um, one of the nicest things about being a creator and having a channel is like, you know, having the place to kind of show off something that I made, if that makes sense, you know, and I just, I don't know, I think that people should be it should be proud of of things that they make, you know? And I, I do believe that being creative, no matter, in, in whatever way, maybe it's editing videos, maybe it's cooking, maybe it's some type of crafting or writing or whatever, you know? I do, I think that everybody should have something like that in their life. I think it's really good for one's mental health. And I also think that when other people see it, 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 I don't know. It's 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 a nice thing too. So I we just love to share when people send in pictures. So I have my list here. Let's start. So first up, oh, this is from our just monkeying around video. I think that was like a month or maybe even a month and a half ago. And this is from Karen N. And she made the monkey bread, y'all. Ah, that recipe was so good. It's so funny. Time passes. I forgot all about it. I'm making that one again. So thank you, Karen, for reminding me and yours looks delish okay <laughs> all right next up shauna sent in up uh, the soup y'all and i'm almost almost sure this is the minestrone soup now if i'm wrong about that i will put that right down here with a little bit of text in there if i'm wrong but uh oh it looks good shauna thank you for sending that picture in and then uh Okay, so it's Car New 3. I know who that is. Ah, thank you for sending a picture. Made Stevens cabbage and noodles, and she added carrots to it. I never thought of doing that. I'm, I'm sure that is absolutely delish. Okay, so moving right along, I have a little video for you here. Kathy L. Uh, she's been out working in the yard and gardening, and she's been... Uh, my gosh, I don't know if you can see it in the video. I know it's probably a little bit small, but she made um, these these ladybugs herself out of little styrofoam balls. They're so awesome. And there's fairy lights in there. Ah, oh, it's so, so cool. Um, oh, yeah, and sticking with, like, plants, I guess, we did a video, uh, I think it was here on Mondays with Mark, where we did all dollar store planter ideas. And um, Randy L. sent in the butter dish. Ah, that was my favorite planner of that whole episode. I have two of them at work. So thank you so much, Randy. It looks good. And then, okay, so this one, okay, this was sent in from Kamonica411, and she made the elephant, that plastic elephant toy from the dollar store. Oh, it looks so good. Looks so, so good. And then most recently, most recently, last week's video, remember the s'mores, the strawberry s'mores dip we made? Check out Erin Kay's. Oh, and she made it by putting the graham crackers right in it, like you would make a traditional s'mores, and then wrapped it up, and then dipped afterwards. Oh my gosh. Imagine the graham crackers getting all like soft and mushy in there and using that as a dip. 
I'm so trying that next time. So there were just a couple pictures uh, that were sent in from our viewers. Um, I didn't get to do all of them because I like to space them out a little bit. So thank you everyone who sent in pictures. And, and, and really, if you do anything that, you know, we've done here on the channel or whatever, send me a picture and I'll share it in a future video, okay? All right, cool. Oh my gosh. Ah, we did a lot tonight, didn't we? I feel like I've talked your ear off. Oh my gosh. All right, so we're just gonna bring this baby in for a landing, okay? Thank you so, so much for spending your time with me today. It does, it does, it means the world to me. Thank you so, so much. Definitely hit that subscribe button, okay? And hit that notification bell so you know when we have a new video coming out, okay? Check us out over on Facebook and Instagram and all of our contact information is listed right down below. That's our P.O. box and our, um, what else is on there? Our email address. Well, all that information is listed right down below. You know the drill. I've said this probably a zillion times. <laughs> you know, thank you again, everybody, for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a fantastic week. Remember, everybody, stay positive. Ciao! <laughs>